In this video, we're going to be looking at some simple ways that data is displayed. We'll start with seeing how two-way tables can be used to organize data. We'll then move on to bar charts and see the key areas that you will need to include to draw an accurate bar chart or a comparative bar chart. Then we'll look at pie charts and see how to calculate the angles and how to go about reading data to answer questions from pie charts. Here, we've got a question with a good deal of information to organize. The question states that there are 108 people in a local football supporters association that could have attended a match. They find that 80 supporters in the association are male. 20 of the female supporters attended the match and 40 supporters didn't attend the match. We're then asked to find the probability that if one of the supporters was chosen at random, that they were male and they attended the match. In order to organize this data, let's use a two-way table. These are really useful as long as there are no overlapping pieces of data. No one can both attend and not attend the match. So before laying out our table, we need to consider how this data can be categorized. These supporters either attended the match or did not attend the match. They were either male or female. So we can use these as our labels. And we also need to remember to have a total for each of the rows and the columns. This will give us an overall total amount. When dealing with two-way tables, the first thing I always look to add is the total piece of data in my table. In this case, the total amount of supporters in the association. It states there's 108 in total, and we can place this in the total total of our table. We can then work our way through the information that we've been given. We know we have 80 male supporters, so we can add that to the male total. We've also been told that 20 of the female supporters did attend the match, so we can place that in the box for female attended. And lastly, we're told that 40 of the supporters did not attend the match, so we can add that to the total for the column of those who did not attend. Now, having added all that information, we can look at the rows and the columns that have one space and calculate their value. To start with, we can work out the total amount of female supporters in the association by subtracting the 80 males from the 108 total to get 28 females. Then, if we know that 20 of the females attended the match, it must mean that 8 didn't. Now we can work out that if 8 of those that did not attend are female, we can subtract that from the 40 to get 32 males that didn't attend the match. If there are 80 males in total, we know that 32 of them did not attend the match, and we can subtract that from 80 to work out that 48 males did attend. We can then add 48 to 20 to find that 68 of the supporters did attend the match in total. Once we've completed the two-way table, it's always good practice to add the total of the rows and the columns to ensure it comes to the overall total pieces of data, which you can see this one does. Now to the probability part of the question. We're told that one of the supporters is chosen at random. What is the probability that they are a male that attended the match? As we know, there are 48 male supporters that attended out of a possible 108 supporters. We can say the probability is 48 over 108. We can then simplify this with the lowest common multiple of 12 to get four over nine. So we divided both the top and the bottom by 12. The probability that supporter chosen at random would be male and attended the match would be four out of nine. Now let's look at how bar charts are used to represent data and the aspects of them that they will be looking for in exam questions so that you can know how to represent the data accurately. It's worth remembering if they ask you to display data in an appropriate chart, then they are usually referring to a bar chart as they're the go to charts for displaying data especially on the foundation paper. With bar charts, there are three things that you want to use to ensure your data is accurate and understood. Firstly, that you start with a scale on the left-hand vertical axis that begins with zero and goes up in even amounts. Next, we need to make sure that we have labeled both the axes. And lastly, we need to ensure the data is accurate and clear. We'll see how this can be done in the following bar chart. Here, we'll add the scale, which will start at zero and go up to 10, as the largest piece of data is nine. 
It's a good idea, just as you have done with the scale on the vertical axis, to look at the space you have on the horizontal one. You'll need to consider that all the bars must be the same width, and there needs to be a consistent gap between each bar. The reason we have the gaps is we don't want it to be confused with a histogram, which we'll look at in a future video. Let's double check against our data table that we have plotted them all accurately. Cats should equal 9, dogs should equal 7, rabbits equals 3, and others equals 1. Ensure you've drawn all of these as straight lines using a ruler and using the lines on the graph paper to ensure their accuracy. Next, we'll look to create a comparative bar chart to show the data from two sources. We can use the same classification for this one, as we're comparing the data in the previous bar chart with another class's data on the same topic. So we can use the same scale, as the largest piece of data is still 10, and we've used the same categories for the data. However, as we're going to be plotting the data from each of the class as a bar within the same category, we're going to require a key to differentiate between the bars. These bars in the categories should be placed together, but still leave a gap between each of the categories. We can plot class A's data as it was the same as the previous bar chart, and then plot class B's beside it. So for cats, class B had five, for dogs they had 10, for rabbits they had two, and they had five for the other types of pets, like this. As you can see, plotting bar charts is quite simple. You just have to remember the scale, labels, and to draw accurate bars, and you can almost always gain full marks from them. Remember, if it's a comparative bar chart where you're comparing two sets of data, you're going to need a key to differentiate the bars. Next, we'll look at pie charts and how to ensure we can display the information accurately. With all pie charts, you will always find they are filled. There's no gaps between the sectors, and this knowledge helps you to calculate the size of each of the sectors. As the degrees in a circle always add up to 360, so will the total of the angles for each of the sectors. As we know this must be true, we can state that the value of each piece of data in degrees will be 360 divided by the total of the frequency, which in this case is 20. So 360 divided by 20 gives us 18 degrees per piece of data. We can now use this as a multiplier for each category of data to find what the angle will be. 9 times 18 is 162 degrees, 7 times 18 is 126 degrees, 3 times 18 is 54 degrees, and 1 times 18 is 18 degrees. All of these degrees should and do add up to 360, so we can proceed. You'll need your protractor in order to plot these angles on the pie chart. Place the crosshairs on the centre of the circle, which is at the end of the line. Ensure that the zero of your protractor is on the line. If the zero is the start of the outside set of measurements on your protractor, measure around until you get to 162, place a mark, and draw a line. We'll turn the protractor around so the crosshairs are still on the centre and the zero is now on the line we've just drawn. This time, we'll measure 126 degrees, mark it, and draw the line in. Again, turn the protractor around, keeping the crosshairs on the centre, the zero is on the new line, measure 54 degrees and mark it and draw it in. We can now check how accurate our sectors are as the last sector we can just measure and it should be 18 degrees. We can then label each sector clearly to show what they represent and we've completed our pie chart accurately. Next, let's look at how we can interpret and gain information from a pie chart. The first thing to acknowledge is that if we don't have an amount for what the pie chart represents or what a particular sector represents, we're not going to be able to compare these pie charts, as we wouldn't know whether it represents 12 pets or 120. If that's the case and you're being asked to compare them, simply state that you can't because there's not enough information. In this case, once we're told that the pie chart represents 24 pets, we can calculate the degrees that represent a single pet by dividing 360 by 24. This gives us 15 degrees per pet. We can then calculate that 90 divided by 15 means six are cats, 195 divided by 15 means 13 are dogs, 45 divided by 15 means three are rabbits, 
and 30 divided by 15 means two are in the other category for pets. We can now compare this to the previous pie chart to state the difference in the categories, which one is higher, which one is lower, and make these recommendations. In this video, we looked at how we can organize data into a two-way table. We looked at how to draw an accurate bar chart and a comparative bar chart. Remember to consider the scale, label, and how to clearly represent the bars. We looked at calculating the degrees per unit of data to use as a multiplier to find the angles in pie charts. And then we looked at how we can interpret the data from a pie chart. In the next video, we'll be looking at different types of averages and also the range. And I'll see you then.